Hello guys, this is Pantsmice36 and today's video is going to be a little bit of a discussion about what I recommend as just weathering products in general. Today I was asked by somebody what I would recommend as a universal set of weathering products because he was looking to buy some more products, he had a little bit of money to spend and I answered him and I also thought that that would be a good idea to do a little bit of a video on because I'm often asked questions about weathering products and I think it would be a good idea just to give you guys uh, a rundown of what I recommend. This is just me though, what I recommend people or at least what I recommend people would get based on how I weather my tanks and what stuff I do in my videos. Now I'm sure all of you know that I'm a big fan of weathering with oils. I do like oil paints a lot and I think they're very versatile. You can do chipping, streaking, p painting even, just like painting areas, faces, depending on what you're doing. You can really do just anything. You can grease build up wash, filter, it can all be done with oils. So let's first go over what I'd recommend for oil paints. We're also going to go over like washes and filters and pigments, stuff like that in a minute here, but we're going to start with, with uh, oil paints. So here is my Stug 3 that I've been weathering recently and I've been filming it. I'm going to do a big video on the entire weathering process step by step, showing you guys and explaining every little bit of it. But uh, on this tank, the weathering that I did with oils, I only used three colors. I'll show them here. They were Wilder Light Buff, Dark Yellow, and Brown Shadow. And I've been using these Wilder oils recently. I think they're very good. They are especially designed for tanks, first of all. And I find them to be a little faster drying and kind of a little easier to work with than Artist Oils. But if you don't have access to these colors, then I recommend that you would get some... Uh, first of all, Windsor & Newton brand, I think, is the best Artist Oil brand for modeling. I've never tried Aptilin oils, but I'm pretty sure they're very good. But these colors here, what I recommend, that's kind of like equivalents to these wilder ones here, to be Naples yellow, yellow ochre, and raw umber, which is like a light yellow, a dark yellow, and a brown. Uh, as greens and blues kind of go, I have a lot of oil paints. Really, for oil paints, you just kind of need a bunch. First of all, I guess you need a white and a black. I've also got Windsor Newton white. Um, recommend a turquoise is always good. Uh, for camouflage, it's green, it's like a highlight, maybe a dark green as well. I've got this green earth here, which I really like. This is uh, emerald green. We've got wilder olive green, which is a nice light green color as well. And for blues, um, if you're doing a, like a yellow tank, if you're doing a dot filter on it, you can always use some blue in there, which is kind of like a opposite color, so it kind of works like that. Adding a little bit of a grayish hue, because can use complementary colors, which are opposites. So, um... A dark purplish blue will be interesting. I also have this blue patina here, which I used on a Panzer III that was uh, Panzer Gray, which is kind of always a little bit of a bluish gray. So it was cool to use this to add a nice bluish hue to it. Kind of use it as a highlight almost in some of the blue areas. And uh, I guess, I mean, I have more colors behind me. I have like uh, reds and browns and stuff like that. I never really use anything other than what I just showed you here like on a yellow tank or basically on any color tank I will use a light color of the base a dark color of the base so like a light yellow and a dark yellow like I showed you and then a brown is a really dark shadow and if it's a green tank well I'll use like a, a turquoise as a light green that I'll use like a darker green and probably a black as a darker color on a I don't know with a gray tank I'll use maybe like a light gray a blue and a black, it just I like a, a highlight, like a mid shadow color, and then a really dark shadow color. And uh, on this, oh, I'll show you my Stug 4 here. My Stug 4 had a bunch of colors used on it because it was a camouflage pattern. Here's my Stug. Um, again, I use, I think I use these same three paints here. These two and this one. Uh, though I mainly focused the brown shadow on the brown camouflage areas, and then I think I used uh, the olive green as the highlight on it. I was really focusing on those wilder oils. I did videotape that, but I didn't really like how it came out, so I probably won't upload that because I just I'll just show you what I did on the stug instead. But I was just basically doing mainly focusing because it's mainly yellow on highlighting the yellow areas. You can see there's like whites there. There's also like uh, brownish shadow areas. Uh, just getting mainly modulation on the yellow areas. And then on the green areas, that's when I kind of use the olive green, which is a lighter color of the green camouflage color. As a highlight, I didn't really do much of a shadow or anything like that. I just kind of used a highlight color and left the rest of the green as it was. And on the brown, this was like a darker than the camouflage color, so I used that as kind of like a shadow color. 
didn't really focus too much on, on rendering or working on the camouflaged areas, mainly just on the yellow because it was mostly yellow. And I think it came out well, I just really just blending and kind of like working colors together and also near the areas where the colors transition between, like a green and yellow, I would also bring in some yellow colors there and just help kind of like blend it a little more. And that also helps to kill any overspray specks that you might have because they kind of get softened up even more by the um, whatever color, in this case it was yellow, that I was working in there. So as far as oil paints are concerned, I'd recommend the Wilder brand if you can get it because it's not that expensive and it works well on models. If you can't get it, uh, you can get Winsor Newton in pretty much every art store in the world, I'm pretty sure. They're a very well-known brand and I like their stuff a lot. That's what I recommend if you can't get the Wilder stuff. As for thinners, I... Well, this stuff is the best stuff in the world, but as you can see, I'm running out. I only have a tiny little bit left and I'm saving it up because this stuff is weird. It's a Gotrick solvent. It's a brush cleaner, but it also says for diluting oil colors. And the weird thing is it only dilutes oil paint. If you use like an enamel thinner, which is what most people will work on if you're doing a, um, if you're trying to like blend oil paints, on a model at least, that will also uh, affect any unsealed, if you haven't done a sealing coat, any other like enamel paints you have underneath there, which would be probably like your filter and your wash and stuff like that, those can't be affected. This only thins down oil paints. You cannot thin enamels with it, or at least on a model, I've un I've had unsealed, I basically never seal anything, but I've had like wash and stuff on, and I'm rubbing in oils with this stuff, and it never has any effect on any of the enamel products underneath. So it only thins oil paints, which is the coolest thing ever, because I don't have to seal anything. But I don't know where to get it. The art store that I got it at closed down, and uh, this company bought it out, and they have a very similar looking product here, but it doesn't work the same. It doesn't, it doesn't really thin oil stuff that well. It's mainly just a brush cleaner. Like it says for diluting oil colors, but it doesn't work the same way. It's a little different, so I don't like it. It was only like three bucks though, so not too bad. But this, this, if you can get this, get it, and send me some because I don't know where to get it. It is lovely, and I cannot recommend this more. If you can't get it. You can use any enamel thinner. I've got Wilder thinner. I've got a tiny little bit of AK White Spirit left. You can use anything like that. It'll all thin down any oil paints. Just make sure that if you have any um, weathering products on, on, on there before, like a wash or an enamel filter, you should seal them. I usually don't, and I don't really ever have a problem with it because usually I let them dry for about a day or so. Like on my stove there, I didn't do any sealing coats after I put the, um, the, the enamels on. I didn't seal it. And I did all the weathering and with the oils and I used Wilder Thinner. I didn't have any problem with it like that. So that was okay. But you can have a problem. So seal it if you can. That's just not my style though. I like to work pretty fast and I don't like waiting a day or two for a sealing coat to dry. Now let's look at some washes and filters. Now first of all, the difference, I'm asked this a lot, the difference between a wash and a filter is a wash or a pin wash or however you apply it is mainly meant to stay just around details and to provide a shadow, or like a false shadow effect. I can show you this on my stove here, if I can get it. As you can see around the bolts on the front here, on the front armor plate there, there's darkness around them, they're not just a flat coat, like you can see there's like almost like a shadow effect around them. That is a wash. Now a filter is kind of hard to show because I've already done weather on top of this, but a filter is a very thin coat that you apply over the entire model, you don't just apply it around details, you apply it over the whole thing and you let it sit on all surfaces. And a filter is usually meant to, well, you can do a couple of things, mainly it just provides a little bit of warmth and difference to the base color. Uh, for example, on the last, or I think of the second last Panzer III I was working on, the one that I did the winter whitewash on, I painted it gray. And then I gave it a blue filter and that gave the gray a slight bluish tint to it which is realistic because Panzer Grey was never just grey, it was always kind of like a little bit blue in some way, at least how I've seen it in photos and stuff like that, and I like it that way because it looks cool, it looks a little less boring. Um, on this tank, uh, I painted it a kind of like just a normal boring yellow color, and I can't really say that this is the filter because I've done oil rendering on this as well, but some areas where you can see it's a little, look, it's looking a little more golden, like it just has a little bit of a interest to the color. That was what the filter does. The filter is a very thin coat of paint that can slightly alter the 
the base color of the tank and add warmth or depth to it, however you apply it or or whatever color you choose. Also, you can apply in a in like a a downward streaking motion along like panels that are like angled downwards, and that kind of adds a very subtle streaking effect. That's something you can also do. So uh, first, let's look at filters. Uh, filter I used on the Stug was the uh, Wilder. This one here is a dark tan. Four pans are yellow. I just use it because it's dark tan. Four pans are yellow. Four pans are yellow. Um, it worked well. In the past, I have used this one here. This is gray for bright green. It is not gray. It is yellow, and I used it on a yellow tank. Um, that was a little different. This is like a um, a darker color than the yellow, obviously. So that's warmth to it. This is basically the same color as the yellow. So I did this on a tank with a camouflage pattern, and that helped to tone down the camouflage colors and make them and give them a little bit of a tint that resembled the base color, which was yellow. And that kind of helps to unify it and make it look like a little more less, a little more toned down. Let's say it makes it look kind of like more, as I said, unified. It makes it look like it works together. Um, I also use this on a green tank, which added a nice faded effect on it. That was my T62, which I did like a year and a half ago. Which I think it's kind of what's meant for a bright green. I'm not sure about the gray bit because it is obviously yellow. This is the um, the Sin Industries filter by MIG. I have a couple of these. I also have their Panzer Gray one. It's a blue color. This is what I used. I think I've used it in the past. And I also have the Wilder one here, which is quite equivalent. You can see it's a this one's a little bit darker, but they're very similar. But I, this one's meant for white camouflage. I've never tried it on a white camouflage, but that's what it is written as there for, but I've tried it on a blue tank as well. It worked well. Uh, I didn't honestly notice much of a difference between these two, just this was a darker blue than this one. But I've never tried this on a white camouflage, that's what it's meant for, so I don't know. And I also have this one here, I've never used this for, this is the uh, for Russian and Allies green. I believe it'll work well in the green, it's a dark brown color which looks nice, it's kind of like a muted brown. I've never used it, so I can't say, but that's what I have, and this is what I will use on a green in the future. So I'll update you guys and let you guys know. Uh, in the past, I've just used a dark green color. I think I had some big ammo winter streaking grime. Here we go. Or no, sorry, AK Interactive. Winter streaking grime. This is what I've used in the past for a, a green wash. It's a very dark green color. So I would just thin it down because it's quite thick right now, meant to be used for streaking effects. I will thin that down a little bit, and then I will even though it's meant for green uh, winter vehicles much like this filter here, the blue filter I've used on Panzer Grey instead then I use this on a green tank and it's a dark green color so it, it's a nice kind of like a filter I think I also did that on my T62 pretty sure as well Al along with this one here which is like a, a, you know, like a fading color now for a wash I have a couple products here I like to use a lot I've got the Wilder Deep Shadow Wash which I think is a really nice color it's quite dark, but I used it on my Winter Panzer III and I liked how it looked on the white wash. It was quite dark on the white wash, but it still looked nice. Also, this product here, this is Mig Ammo Winter, uh, sorry, Mig Ammo Streaking Grime, or Streaking Effects. It's called Streaking Effects, but here it says Streaking Grime. This is a uh, slightly lighter brown color, and I'm not much of a fan of doing Streaking Effects this way. I more like to do it as a dot filter or something like that. But I like this color a lot, so I will thin it down because it's quite thick. As I was talking about earlier with the winter streaking grime that was quite thick, I thinned it down to be a filter. This I thin it down less, so it's a little thicker than a filter. And then I use it as a wash, and I think it's a nice color. But these are really the only proper washes I have right now, honestly. Uh, mainly I will, or in the past mainly, I've been just been thinning down oil paints and making my own color of wash. Because I've got tons of oil paint, so I can make like a custom mix. Mainly like usually to be a dark brown or a dark green color, something like that. That's mainly what I would do, but for washes in general, now, I'm using these ones which look good on any yellow or gray tank I find. Another thing I am big on is pigments. I like pigments a lot. I find you can do, well, obviously like mud and dust effects with them, but I also find you can even do some kind of color modulation with them if you use a dark, like a black pigment and brush them into like shadowy areas. Similar to how I would do oil rendering, honestly, but I just do it dry with a pigment and that has a little bit of a different effect to it. It looks nice. Um, so I have mainly big productions and wilder pigments. Uh, I find that first of all these are expensive as hell where I come from but I do like this this color here. This is MIG ammo or sorry no MIG production 
dry mud. This is a very nice color. Uh, as you can see, I have like the tiniest, tiniest amount left in there. That's a nice color. I'm looking for something similar to it because these are ex really expensive. But I do like just pigments in general. Like you see, this is like $11 for a MIG pigment where I live. Um, I have like rusty ones. I have a couple of MIG pigments, I guess. I got rust. I got track brown, which is really dark brown. I've got brown mud, which is a like mid-brown. I've got light dust. I've also got a bunch of wilder pigments, which are, I guess, equal in the fact that they're just a pigment. They have lots of colors. I like especially this brown version of pigment. This is a nice color. And I guess you also, I'd recommend you get a dark pigment like this. A lighter pigment, you can get dry Russian clay or um, industrial dust. is a little more gray, which I use on my Panzer III. The, the one with the French camouflage, which is gray. On a tank that's more yellow, I would probably use this one because it has a slightly yellowish hue. Uh, also, depending on where it's served, you can also use different colors there. But I always like to kind of make the colors a little more similar to the base color in the tank. So I'll use a, a more yellowish, gray, light dust pigment on a yellow tank, and I'll use like a gray pigment on a, as a dust pigment on a gray tank. Uh, so if you're buying some pigments, the colors I recommend you buy doesn't really... I can't really say. It just depends on what tank it is and how you're weathering it. And I cannot really give you enough recommendation as far as like all the individual colors go because I don't have enough experience with tons and tons of pigments. But I recommend, as I said before, you get a, if you're going like on a super low budget, you get a dark pigment, a light pigment, and maybe a mid. This is like a medium brown. That's pretty good. Like here I've got light, dark, brown. Here I've got a, let's say like that, light. So this is kind of like a mid-dark, that's pretty dark. I don't know, they're kind of just different colors. Um, and of course there's other products for mud, like there's all the MIG mud washes. I think I have one of those, and there's Wilder Heather Textured Earth Pigment, or uh, I guess it's not really a pigment, it's more of like a paste. It's acrylic product, it's different than pigments and like enamel washes and stuff like that. That's really nice, um, but looking at basic pigments, I would just recommend a light, a mid, a dark, and rust. Rust is always good for like a exhaust. So I've got like some welder rust here and I've got a couple of them. Nice. This one's actually, this is a bright yellow. You'd think that a bright yellow is weird on an exhaust, but actually I tried it on the Stug 4 exhaust and it looked really good. So I would recommend that if you're getting some rusty pigments or rusty paints, you're doing like a, maybe you're painting an exhaust by hand, a bright, bright yellow if you do it in a light enough coat, actually has a nice effect. And then of course, like you need like a mid rusty uh, color like that or like this. And then on the exhaust, actually use this dark brown as a base on the exhaust, just because I like to base my exhaust in a dark brown color. Now I'm not too big on rust effects in my tanks. I find them to be quite weird looking. I might do a little bit of rust around a chip, like a heavily chipped area, but I don't like to do like a lots of rust streaks in a tank. I find it looks weird. And tanks usually didn't survive long enough in combat to get really rusty. They were usually knocked out before that could really happen. But the, pro the products I have to use or to, to do those effects with are, I've got AKA Interactive Rust Streaks, which I have used before in the past, a while ago when I was big on rust and stuff like that. And I've got Wilder or a Rust Effect here, which is a little bit different. Um, it's kind of more like meant to be, this is like more of a streaking effect, this is more like a thing you're supposed to kind of like brush around a chipped area and let it kind of like modify the base color, almost like a filter in a small area like that, I guess you can probably also do some streaking effects with it if you want, though I usually use oils for streaking effects now, but I mean, if you're doing some rust effects, I'm no expert on it, I'm not a big fan of it either, I mean if people do a good job on it, I like it, but personally I don't like to do rust effects on my tanks. So these are the products that I have in this case. Uh, recommending them is kind of weird for me because I haven't actually tried this one yet and I'm not a fan of rust effects. So I'm not going to really give you any recommendations per se, but this is what I have. And now we're going to go into these products for a moment here. Now I have not done a desert tank in a very long time. I did one a while ago and I just used the MIG dry mud pigment I was talking about before. But for doing sand effects, what I've seen from other members on YouTube, uh, namely Mark O'Neill and uh, Schweinhund227, they do a really nice job of doing dust effects on modern tanks using, I'm not sure if they use both of these or just one of them, but I know they use these AK Interactive uh, dust effects. This is Africa dust effects, this is just normal dust effects. 
I got these in a pack that also came with some thinner. And I've tried them just kind of like airbrushing them. But what you're kind of supposed to do is like airbrush them or apply them on by brush. And then you can kind of like let them sit for a while. And then you kind of like work them around with some thinner. And it kind of resembles built up dust. I've never done that myself. But I've seen the effects that these guys do with them. And they look incredible. And I really want to try that. I don't have any desert tanks lined up for me in a while though. Maybe I might do my Bradley's at Desert One. But it's probably going to be NATO. But if I do... I'm going to use these products here and I'm going to try the same effects they do. So if you're going to do some dust effects like this, of course you can always use pigments for that, but I have seen guys do a really nice job using these, so I would recommend, kind of, not personally, but I recommend that you, if you're trying to do something like that, did you get these, and then you go look at their work and maybe ask them. I don't want to like send people over asking them, but there's probably places online that explain how to use these products like AK Interactive probably is like a website or something like that or people have used them in the past you can probably find how to use these but I've seen the effects that these products do and I think they look great so this is my kind of recommendation for doing some dusty effects apart from just using pigments obviously which is probably what I would do and what I've done in the past but I'm curious about trying these out in the future another product I would recommend if you are doing a winter camouflage as not exactly a weathering product, but more of like, it's kind of like weathering because you're chipping it. It's a chippable winter camouflage product. This is AK Interactive Washable White Paint. Basically, you, uh, it says brush and airbrush, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to airbrush this on. I've done in the past, you airbrush it on, and then uh, you don't let it dry for too long. You have to probably do this in a couple hours, otherwise it will completely harden. But you get some water on your brush. It's similar to the hairspray technique, though. you can do the same thing with the hairspray technique, but basically you get some water in your brush and you can kind of like scratch at it and it will kind of wear off in a realistic chipped pattern. So uh, this is kind of like weathering product, I guess you could say, so I'll go over this. You can also use uh, some chipping fluid, I've got some heavy chipping fluid here, or hairspray. As far as I can tell, this works exactly the same way as hairspray, just this is already in a bottle for you to pour into your airbrush. Uh, and I like airbrushing rather than just spraying with the hairspray bottle, but usually what you'd do if you're doing it this way is you would apply, you'd airbrush on two coats of this or do two coats with the hairspray bottle. Make sure it's like a water soluble hairspray that's not going to kill your tank. But you basically do two coats of that, spray one, let it dry, then immediately spray another coat, let it dry, and then after that, you don't let very much time to set there. You basically spray, dry, immediately spray again, dry, and then you immediately spray your camouflage pattern on top of that or let's say your winter, you can spray some white paint as a winter camouflage and then you let that dry and you immediately start to chip it the same way, getting some water on a brush you can kind of scratch at it and the hairspray or chipping fluid underneath will start to kind of like peel off because it's water soluble and then that'll peel off underneath the white paint that you airbrushed on leaving chipped shapes and areas like that of course you can do this with the hairspray chipping method, you can spray like a primer red do the hairspray or this method and then spray like your actual camouflage colors on top and have like a chipped primer color underneath or you can do it with a whitewash or anything like that you can really just get any chipping product like that or a chipping effect like that so if you're going to do that uh, you can always use hairspray I don't I've never used hairspray uh, so I could I recommend a certain brand but I've used chipping fluid by AK Interactive it works well and I've used this by AK Interactive it works well um, and that's kind of it for the uh, essential weathering products I think you should have. Like, I mean, there's more specialty products, like I mentioned, the Wilder Textured Earth there. You can go into, like, really special products like that, which I also recommend. But as far as, like, base products go, if you're doing a winter camouflage, I recommend this. Or you can get some chipping fluid or hairspray and some white paint and do it that way. Uh, filters, I recommend. This works well. I mentioned these just a minute ago. Where's my blue one? I lost my blue filter, but I've gotten like my, uh, this, uh, basically like the Wilder filters are good, the Sin Productions, MIG Productions, whatever, Sin Industries MIG Productions filters are good. Um, I do like, as I mentioned here, the Deep Shadow Wash and the Streaking Effects slash Streaking Grind by MIG Ammo, this Thin Down, they're really nice washes on tanks. Uh, and I recommended the oil paints there, either Windsor, Newton, or Wilder if you can get it. As far as thinner goes, any thinner will do. I use Wilder because I'm out of AK, and AK is harder to get where I am from. Uh, but really, 
it's mainly just what your style of weathering is. My style of weathering is mainly working with oils, a couple of pin washes and filters on there, but I really like to work with it mostly in the oils. And also, of course, doing some acrylic chipping in there. That's just with like the same kind of colors that I airbrush with, which are mainly just Tamiya paints that I thin with lacquer thinner, by the way, because lacquer thinner I find works better than uh, using water or X20, which is just isopropyl alcohol. So I guess that kind of wraps up this video, guys. Um, this is kind of like what I would recommend somebody would look at if they're interested in getting some weathering products to start up the hobby or maybe go a little deeper into weathering and stuff like that. Um, but as I mentioned there, yes, this is my recommendations. My weathering process is very heavy on oils. A lot of people, if they're new to the hobby, aren't really too into oils. They mainly like to look at these products that already exist because they're a little easier to do than working for six hours like I did on my stug there. I'm not even joking. It's six hours of oil rendering on that thing. So much fun, though. <laughs> but um, the oil weathering process is a little different, and it's a little more, I guess you could say, advanced. Not necessarily hard, but just very time-consuming, and you really need to kind of have the eye for picking the proper colors for your camouflage and everything like that. Though I gave you good, you guys some good recommendations that I would say there with the uh, colors for like yellow and green and brown like that. Uh, but really it just always depends. There's no definite like five products I can list that everybody needs because first of all I haven't tried every single product that exists. Like at first of all I haven't tried uh, MIGs or MIG Abtiling oils. I hear they're very very good but I've never tried them so I cannot recommend them. But from the products I have in my possession, I've shown you the ones that I'd recommend due to my experiences with them or experiences with products that are the same but like a different color like I did with that filter there that I've never tried. Um, so I guess that kind of wraps up this video, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Pansmice36. If you have any uh, comments or anything like that, questions you guys want to ask me about other products and stuff like that, you can post them in the comments below. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching very much, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, yeah. So, bye guys, this is Pansmice36, and I'll see you in the next one.